Welcome back guys, JC here, and I have a bit of a review for some receivers, at least Free Sky receivers. Now I have ordered these from my least favorite to favorite. Throughout the video I will explain the differences between all of these and explain why uh, I have chosen them to be in this order. Before we even begin, I have to say that this order is only for smaller multi-rotors, you know, like 180 to 250 size quads uh, that's used for acrobatic flying and racing. If we were talking about larger multi-rotors like hexacopters, octocopters, uh, for like a GPS build or something like that, or even fixed wings like airplanes, gliders, stuff like that, then the order would be completely different. So, so throughout this video, even if I do say the X8R is my least favorite, I am just applying that to acrobat flying and racing. Uh, it would actually be my favorite for a large GPS build or a fixed wing or you know some other type of aircraft as well as I would rearrange these in another order as well. But uh, just keep that in mind. I'm not saying that any of these are bad. I'm just saying for this application, this is my order. So let's begin. Uh, why did the X8R make the list? Well, all four of these made the list because all four of these are by far the most common receivers in this hobby. But the X8R specifically makes the list because it is it's so common because when you purchase a Tyrannus, a lot of people offer a package where you can get the Tyrannus and X8R together for a cheaper price. Uh, so many guys just opt to get that package and they end up with the X8R. The X8R is a PWM receiver, uh, meaning you would have one signal wire going to each and every one of these channels. And it's also capable of SBUS, meaning you would only have one signal wire but get 16 channels through that one signal wire. Also, SBUS is faster than PWM, so a lot of us multi-rotor guys, we just use SBUS and that one signal wire. Uh, now, the eight PWM channels are great because of, you know, if you were plugging these into servos or something on an airplane, then that's what you would use that for. Next up is the D4R2. This used to be a very popular receiver because uh, it was... Well, obviously, it's much smaller than the X8R. Guys wanted smaller packages because we're flying smaller multi-rotors. Now, the D4R is different from all three of these in a couple different ways. All three of these are capable of SBUS, where the D4R2 uses uh, PPM. It is capable of PWM. You get four channels on PWM, but what you can do is place this jumper on it, and that will convert it to PPM, meaning you'll get eight channels through that, that uh, one signal wire, much like with SBUS. Uh, the difference is PPM is slower than SBUS, just like PWM is slower than PPM. And, you know, it's so you get the idea. It's SBUS, then PPM, and then PWM. Now, that's really not that big of a deal because, personally, I can't tell a difference in speed. Uh, I, there's a difference on paper, but... I really just can't tell the difference in the speed. Now some guys can tell a difference and I take their word for it. It's much like with uh, like PID loop times, I can tell a difference between 2 kilohertz and 4 kilohertz, but I can't tell a difference between 4 and 8 where some guys can. Uh, so point that I'm trying to make is it's not that big of a difference. Uh, you, you may not even be able to tell. Uh, now as far as telemetry, all four of these get telemetry, but the D4R2 has a different type of telemetry. Uh, I believe it's more of a like an analog signal, something like that, where the three of these use smart port telemetry. But once again, uh, it's no different. You're still going to wire it the same. Uh, the telemetry is still going to work the same. Y you would never know a difference unless I told you. Now, instead of the D4R2, uh, what came after that was the X4R and then the X4RSB, which stands for SBUS. Now, my I just placed this cover on because I've actually modified mine, but this is what it actually looks like. Uh, what a lot of guys do is they take the cover off, and this goes for the D4R2 as well. And you can completely depen it and just direct solder your wires to these pads, just making it a smaller package. Now the X4R SB is the same exact size, dimensions, pins, everything. Even It, it even has this little connector on the side. I've removed mine, but... It's the same exact size and everything as the D4R2. The difference is that this is a SBUS receiver where this is PPM. So like I said, SBUS faster than PPM. Not only that, but you will get eight channels through this one. You can get 16 channels through this one. 
Another thing that the X4R has that the D4R2 does not is these four little pins on the sides. You can use these pins to, uh, if you accidentally fry this 3.3 volt voltage regulator, you can bypass it using these pins. I actually have a video showing you how to do that. And it even has a RSSI pad on it here, which uh, you can use that RSSI pad to run a wire from the receiver to an on-screen display or something like that. And that way you can get your RSSI value in your on-screen display. Now, uh, if you have a Tyrannus, then there, there's absolutely no point in doing that because I actually have a video showing you how to get your RSSI in Betaflight, CleanFlight, your on-screen display, everything using a channel from the receiver. So that way you don't need any extra wiring or anything, not only that, but I tend to find it's more accurate. It's also less of a pain in the ass because uh, whenever you run this wire from the receiver to an on-screen display, you're supposed to use like a, a filter or something like that. I don't know. Guys are doing it like three different ways and they're all a headache where the way I show you how to do it using a channel, it's going to be 100% accurate and there's no extra wiring. Then came along the XSR, which is the smallest of all of them. It is also capable of SBUS as well as PPM. You actually get two different pins on it, and this allows you to choose which one you want. Uh, the great thing about this is uh, you can have SBUS for those faster signal speeds and the 16 channels, but SBUS uses a UART port on your flight controller. If you are trying to connect a bunch of devices, uh, then maybe you're short on UARTs and you need that extra UART, then you can use the PPM wire instead and get eight channels, but PPM does not use a UART. It uses the PPM pin on your flight controller. So that will free up a UART, allowing you to attach one extra device. The XSR does have a RSSI pad on it, just like the X4 RSB, uh, but once again, I don't recommend using that. I just recommend using a channel to get your RSSI in your on-screen display. Now the downside to the XSR is uh, you'll notice on all of these, these antennas just clip on. Uh, these connectors are called UFL connectors. Uh, you can buy these antennas. I buy them in packs of 20 or 25 for pretty cheap off of eBay. Uh, but with the XSR, they are soldered on. People feel indifferent about this. Uh, a lot of guys hate that because they hate having a solder on their antennas. Uh, but I personally I like it because I've had problems like in crashes and stuff these UFL connectors the uh, The pins near the the base will actually spread apart over time after they pop off so many times And then they just don't want to stay on where if you solder them on they are never coming off unless you desolder it uh, So personally, I I like this better, but I can see it both ways Also, the XSR has shorter antennas than the rest uh, this is actually how long the antennas are on the D4R2 and X4RSB. I haven't modified it or anything. Now I have shortened them on my X4R, which is something you can do. Um, point is, some guys don't feel comfortable shorten, shortening their antennas, uh, so they, they don't want to deal with it. So they just get the XSR where they already come shortened. But it's up to you. It, that Once again, that's no big deal. Shortening your antennas, are, it's a super easy thing to do. I even have a video showing you how to do that. Technically, another disadvantage of the XSR is some people don't like this plastic JST connector because it has the uh, higher chance of popping off or breaking off in crashes. Um, but then again, what I do is I personally remove it completely and direct solder my wires onto it. I mean, it's already a very small receiver, and that's what I like. But this should give you a pretty good idea of what I'm talking about. Uh, with the connector removed and my wires direct soldered, and I just place it right on top of my fly controller, and it only takes up half a fly controller. Uh, on, even on some of my builds, I, I'll have the XSR taking up half the fly controller, and then if my fly controller does not have a built-in on-screen display, then I will add in a minimum OSD micro on the other half so then I have my OSD and receiver both mounted flat on top of the flight controller and it saves so much space but like I said you can depin your X4 RSB making it a smaller package like this and even remove these um, it's not quite as small as the XSR as you can see here it's a little bit wider and longer but it's not that much bigger so it's, it's not that big of a deal uh, just personally I like to go as small as possible 
And that's pretty much going to do it for all the differences. Um, so I hope this helped you out in choosing your next receiver. You really can't go wrong with either one. They all work. I even have videos showing you how to connect all of these to all my different fly controllers. But that does it for this one, guys. I'll leave some links for you to some playlists in the uh, description below so you can check those out. And thanks for watching. I will see you next time.